So, after posting the first edition of The Method Behind the Madness, I left a comment asking what you guys wanted to see next. Very quickly, it became clear as to what absolute mess of a breakdown I'd be getting myself into, with that being how we shock and kill Boomer. Oh, and before we get started, I just want to stop and say that you guys are crazy. Within the first few days, the first episode of The Method Behind the Madness had over 3,000 views and hundreds of new subs join the channel. So for that, I want to say thank you. It is so cool seeing how many people care about the game just as much as we do. So once again, thank you guys so much, it's been crazy, and let's get right into The Method Behind the Madness. With that done, let's get right into the breakdown. So for this fight, our team composition is as follows. Three Negotiators Dilemma players, two Dedicated Boomer Damage players, one in which is also the Kiter, two Shockers, and one Healer, which is on the turret. To begin, let's start with the most straightforward job, the Negotiators Dilemma players. These players are tasked with bleeding Boomer with Negotiators Damage while he is immune. Each player will take up a position to control an ad spawn, meaning you have one player at Donut 40, one at Burger, and one at 43-44 corner, as these three locations are where all the adds will spawn during this encounter. Now, their job is simple. Tag Boomer with Negotiators, and then proceed to clear any adds that spawn in their area. Now there's a very crucial strategy to this, and that revolves around the build. Each Negotiators player should be running the build shown here, and always be using the Diamondback. Now, I know what you are thinking. The Diamondback? What? But let me explain. The Diamondback is a necessity due to its perk. This perk allows you to guarantee a critical hit after hitting the marked enemy for 5 seconds. This is a huge deal, because in order to deal the most amount of bleed damage to Boomer, you cannot waste a single add, meaning any non-crit on your adds is equal to wasted damage. Additionally, this perk also allows you to spec every attribute into crit damage within the build, as you are guaranteed to crit, eliminating the need for crit chance. So, these players should continue clearing the adds when Boomer is not down in order to maximize the damage done, as if the player continues to kill adds while Boomer is down, then that means you are taking from the limited damage of 2 armor bars per down. Doing this nets you a loss in damage, as now that damage you could have done while he was immune is now gone, essentially making the build useless. So, make sure you are focusing Boomer when he is down to not only help with damage, but to also retag him with negotiators. Lastly, as I have seen a ton of questions regarding the damage transfer of negotiators, you only transfer the amount of damage dealt to each enemy's true health value. Meaning, if an ad has 5 million health, and you hit that ad for 10 million, only 5 million damage is actually applied to Boomer. You cannot hit a massive crit and chunk Boomer due to this design. This is also the reason players are able to one-shot all the hunters on Legendary Summit, because each hunter has the same health value. Next, let's take a look at what the Kiter's job entails. This player should be using the build shown here, specking into crit chance and crit damage paired with the Coyote's Mask to receive the close buff for an additional 25% crit damage for the team. The weapon of choice here would be a CQB M1A with Rifleman, as you are positioned right in Boomer's face and your secondary being the SMG of your choice to help you grab aggro when Boomer first spawns. Utilizing a spotter drone as your skill to help your team see the adds, this player's job is to maintain Boomer's aggro to enable the player on the turret to hit his backpack to drop him, as well as to break Boomer's chest to stop the healing. Take note of the timing in which he does this, as this is very important to stop Boomer in the exact location you want him. We have found it best to bring Boomer to this corner, near Donut, as it provides a clean line of sight for the turret, but it also creates a smaller space for the shock traps to deploy to. This player also should be focusing all of his damage on Boomer when he goes down, Moving on to the second dedicated Boomer player. This player will be using the build shown here, specking all into headshot damage and using the Nemesis with perfect focus, also utilizing a spotter drone to help with ad clear. This player's role is solely to create consistency with the amount of damage and speed in which Boomer takes two bars of armor, hence the Nemesis. This is important because the shock players have to base their throws and timing around how quickly Boomer goes down and comes back up. Yeah. Yep. 
Down. Down. Oh, I gotta reload. Shocked. Next, we have the player on the turret. This player's sole purpose is to down Boomer as soon as he can, without overheating the gun. This player should be using the build shown here, and as you can see, he is also the healer providing future initiative buff, as well as healing for the players at Burger with the healing drone, and the player at 43-44 with the hive. With some practice, one can master the timing and location, with the location being the small plate on the back of the backpack to avoid hitting immunes, and it is important to keep an eye on this as he will be shifting and turning after each and every down. Additionally, you need to time when to begin shooting, as shooting too soon will result in hitting immunes as well. But in the event something does go wrong and the turret does get disabled, it is important for this player to communicate with the team and get Boomer moved to the turret in the back. Lastly, onto the roles who make or break the run, the Shockers. These players' sole purpose is to time the Shock Trap deployment in order to shock Boomer preventing him from disabling the turret, effectively letting you down him in the same exact spot over and over again. Now, these players actually will deploy one shock trap each with a final shock coming from the Scorpio. Now it is important to note that you cannot shock him more than three times in the same place as the first two shocks come from the shock trap and the third comes from the Scorpio buff. The only way to continue shocking him at this point would be to add more players with additional shock traps. So, if these players do their job correctly, it then boils down to the bleeders to do the rest, as these players have essentially enabled 6 bars of armor to be taken off within a short period. Now, when it comes to shocking him, positioning and timing is very important, as you can see where the kiter brings Boomer aids in the shock trap placement. However, once Boomer is in position, it is entirely on the shockers to time out each shock perfectly, as an early shock will not apply to him when he stands, and a late shock will not prevent him from throwing the grenade that disables the turret. Meaning, these guys can't mess up. Now, it is not as simple as, just wait for this and then throw your shock trap. The amount of time Boomer is down also affects the timing here. So, if the bleeders deal massive damage as soon as he goes down, paired with the dedicated Boomer players, it may happen faster or slower, essentially creating inconsistencies, which you can't really avoid. However, we do have some tips on this from the shock players themselves, Lunar and Biscuits. What do you look for in terms for timing when to throw the shock trap? So it's less of looking for it and more of listening. Um, you can look for it visually, but it's a little harder to see. Um, when the minigun is shooting the backpack, there's both a video track that is repeated as well as an audio track that is repeated. Um, I believe it's about four of these audio rotations per um, down if every single shot lands. And so by about the third of that track, I throw my shot trap knowing that the fourth one will be when he goes down and then it will um, the shot trap will set and then shock him as he's coming back up off the knee. Um, basically, it's finding a tempo that your team is killing him in and then being able to land the shot trap in that interval so that way you're consistently getting it. Uh, so for the timing of my shocks, I've sort of built a rhythm and sense for when he'll drop on his knee from just practicing it. So I kind of just check them out when I think it's about time to do so. Uh, but for starters, I would suggest watching the shock debuff icon on Boomer as a visual cue to start building a sense for when you should throw out the shocks. I must point out something though, and that is um, every team's DPS is different depending on the builds and setup. So the timing that works for me doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So definitely play around with it till it works. What do you look for in terms of the shock trap placement? Because of the distance I have to maintain to keep Overwatch, um, I can't land it exactly against the wall. So I try and um, line it up so that way one of the shock traps is hitting the wall directly behind him. Um, so basically I just line it up straight with him and then throw it. Um, I try and make sure that it's actually detonating mid-air to make sure that all the traps are actually scattering properly. Um, but in general, as long as you're getting it, you're aiming around where he's at, usually you're going to land a shock trap on him. So you pretty much just chuck it right on top of Boomer. Um, as long as you're cutting the boss to a location with walls and obst obstacles um, for the shocks to stick and clump onto, it should be fine. 
Theoretically, how many times could you shock him in a row with more people running shocks? Theoretically, you could probably do it an infinite number of times as long as everyone was able to manage their cooldowns. Um, but this would increase inconsistency as you're, the more times you're having to attempt this, the more chances of um, somebody getting off seeing or him happening to turn and that can throw off the rhythm of the whole run. So theoretically, and this is completely theoretical, not to mention I haven't actually limit tested it or anything um, to see how many shocks can be chained onto Boomer, but I personally chained shock Boomer like three times in a row just by myself. Um, so I'm guessing around three or four would be the max. Any more than that would probably require a second person and will it be increasingly difficult to coordinate. Will it be inconsistent? The inconsistencies um, will pop up with how his aggro mechanics work. Um, sometimes he will turn for absolutely no reason while he is shocked, and this can affect how the gunner is shooting things, as well as things like um, the DPS players critting unexpectedly can cause him to come up faster, which can mess with the timing of the shock being applied. Yep, 100% definitely inconsistent. Can you explain how to keep it more consistent? The key to keeping this tactic consistent is to make sure that everybody is doing the exact same thing every single time. So meaning that the speed at which he's going down is consistent, the speed at which he's coming back up off that knee, knee is consistent, and that ad control is done properly. Um, if you can keep all these things consistent, you'll keep the variables to a minimum, but even doing this while it sounds very easy on paper can be very difficult because even as much as him just turning a hair and a few bullets from the minigun missing can cause it to overheat and therefore mess up the consistency. With lots of practice, this can become an extremely consistent method, but it does take a lot of communication and teamwork to make sure everyone's on the same page. Well, you basically just need a ton of practice. Um, shocking Boomer with traps consistent is, consistently is not something that can be guaranteed. Um, in many of our runs, we don't even get the first shock off, let alone a second one. But what I will say is that in at least our own runs, it has become a lot more consistent as of late, simply because the team is working together better. Um, everyone's individual roles are becoming smoother, DPS is more consistent, and with all these things improving, shocks generally become a little, just a little bit easier to land. Why did you settle on the builds you both use in contrast to using riggers or hardwired? So when we first started testing this method, we actually were using riggers. Um, we strayed away from it for two reasons. One was just the pure fact that if you do everything correctly, you only need about two and a half downs. You don't even need a full third down in order to actually kill Boomer if everything is done correctly and when you smooth out the runs. Um, the other reason was because of the amount of status effect duration. So with Riggers, because of it not actually helping with status effect, you don't actually get a huge benefit from it. And you actually have enough of a delay that it can cause some issues for the person on the minigun because it leaves Boomer more likely to turn around. And now he has to shoot the backpack from the when he's facing him rather than with his back turned, which is a much harder task to achieve. The main reason why we never even considered hardwired was because while the reset ability can be helpful for instantly resetting once again we don't really need it and it's much more useful for the consistency for us to have our hives out being used rather than using them as a reset tool for our shock traps with all that said it is important to understand that even we do not get this 100 percent of the time it will ultimately come down to each team practicing and learning their own timings and once again i just want to say thank you guys for all the love and support for the channel and as always, if you have any questions on builds or strategy, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I hope you have all enjoyed the second edition to the series, and make sure to stay tuned for the next episode, where I'll be covering how we pull this one off. Get him.